Tell me a bit about your relationship with the Ahlul Bayt in a, in a sentence or two. Um, I have been bred into loving them and from a very young age. Uh, something that I'm very grateful for. My parents have always, from a very young age, just shown me the path of Ahlul Bayt. Which member of the Ahlul Bayt are you most attached to? Most attached to Fatima Tzahra. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. How do you know much about the relationship between Sayyidah Fatima and Imam Ali? Um, it's the best of examples um, that people can take when it comes to um, dealing with each other or even when it comes to marriage relationship. How do you think the loss of Sayyidah Fatima affected Imam Ali? Um, I think just the fact that Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein came to Imam Ali and said we have lost our mother Fatima Imam Ali, the one who took the door of Khaybar, he fell on the floor um, I think that's enough to show how it affected him, honestly <laughs> So, right now, I want you to imagine that after all the troubles, after the incident of the door, after the, the leadership of number one and number two, Abu Bakr and Umar, and Uthman, and number three, I want you to imagine that you're there in the house of Imam Ali alayhi salam. And it is just before Fajr on the 19th of Ramadan. He's having his breakfast. He tells his daughter to take the yogurt and leave the salt and leave the bread. You're there on the table as well. And he's told you that he's going to go to the mosque of Kufa. And Ibn Muljin is going to perform an action, a striking towards his head. How would you be feeling? What thoughts will be going through your head on that, ta on that table? Do you really have to go? Um, you see, the beautiful thing about our moms is they know what is, what is to face them, but and they go with they go with what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has ordered. But do you really have to go, Imam Ali alayhi salam, with all the orphans, the father of orphans? And we see in our narrations, the orphans were left and as if, as if they have lost their own father. So many people are going to be left as orphans. The orphans never felt that they were orphans with the presence of Imam Ali. That wasn't the feeling that they had. The orphans never felt that they were orphans with the presence of Imam Ali. That wasn't the feeling that they had. That wasn't the feeling that they had. That wasn't the feeling that they had. Because he was a fatherly figure to them all. So it's not just... Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein, Zainab, Abu Fadl Abbas, all his sons and daughters, it's not, it's not just them losing Imam Ali. It's all these orphans that are losing him too. It's not just them losing Imam Ali. It's all these orphans that are losing him too. Now, I want you to imagine that you're there, Masjid al Kufa. You're there in the front line, praying behind Imam Ali. You're in sujood, and you hear someone screaming, and you hear a loud clang, a thud, and you've seen Imam Ali is wounded. What is your initial response? He 
you see I'm he left me confused here because I don't know do I do I hold this Ibn Muljim Lanatullah Ali may Allah withdraw his mercy from him or do I go for the aid of Imam Ali I, I don't know what sort of emotions would be going through you as in do you think you'd be shocked do you think you'd be unsettled from your prayer do you think you'd be uh, angry seeking vengeance i think you'd be unsettled from my prayer like i can see not not just a normal human being being getting striked on the head no it's emir al-mu'minin right in front of me the thing is I, I don't know is this this at, at that exact moment of course I don't know is that is that gonna is that gonna be his last few moments is this strike gonna be something he can heal from I don't know at that exact moment of course that you're describing so you I think everyone would feel a bit of rather than angry or you know, looking for revenge they'll be very concerned about the Imam and they'll be worried about his health and they'll be worried about um, his well-being and whether, like you said, he'll be able to make it through or not this time round Unfortunately, you and I know the story he's carried back to his house he's asked his sons to go ahead and ask that he could walk by himself so that Sayyidah Zainab is not upset or is not unsettled by his well-being. And we know that it's just a short amount of time before he will be leaving us. Now picture you're there beside Imam Ali in his final moments. What would you say to him? What would you ask him if you could say anything to him? He's going to be there for Zainab. He's walking back from the masjid, scared that Zainab might feel there's something wrong. On the plains of Karbala, Zainab stands on the tail and she shouts, Akhi Ya Hussain, come to our aid. She sees her brothers, one after the, one after the other, getting slaughtered, their heads up on spears, the tents being burnt. The children being trampled on by horses. She runs from tent to tent just to put down the fire to gather the children. And you know, Imam Sajjad, he says, the worst, the, the part that hit Imam Sajjad most, and all of our Imams, and any person who has this ghira, he says, have, have you ever heard or ever seen that, that someone from the daughters of the Prophet was sent as a capturer? I think sometimes we all forget that men are the protectors uh, of women and that Imam Ali was the protector of Sayyidah Zainab and he would have been the greatest of protectors but on that plane of Karbala there was no Imam Ali She turned around to him in Karbala yeah. She turned around to him every moment <laughs> Finally, I want you to imagine that you are now face to face with Imam Zaman. 
Hello, Hasten is with your parents. And you're having a conversation with him. And he asks you about how you show your love for Imam Ali through your actions. What do you say to your Imam? I've come short. I've come short. I ask for his forgiveness. These little things I do here and there are nothing compared to what I'm obliged to do. And I will say obliged, not even you no, know, it's obligatory upon me to do more and for the sake of those who gave everything just for this Hidayah to reach us. If it wasn't for them, we'd all be astray right now. Allah would know best what would be facing us. I've come short. Oh, uh -huh. 